Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the men who pioneered our West. Our story is entitled, Kit Carson and the Silk Hats, the dramatic story of the men, civilian and military, who faced high adventure in our great frontier of the West. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Right now, your United States Army, the senior service, needs qualified technicians in such varied and interesting fields as radio, radar, meteorology, photography, and many, many others. Yes, you can be trained to do a job and acquire a skill that will be of great benefit to you for the rest of your life. You can also take pride in the fact that you answered your country's call in time of great need. Why not let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today? Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Station and enlist in the United States Army. Remember, let a thought for tomorrow be your thought for today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Kit Carson and the Silk Hats. <laughs> Our American past abounds with the colorful lives and amazing exploits of its frontier heroes. But perhaps the most colorful, amazing, and wonderful of all was the man named Christopher Carson. Kit Carson, mountain man, hunter, scout, Indian fighter, soldier, and explorer. Top dog of the alligator breed, a symbol for all time of the American frontier. Let's open the book of Kit's life. Turn back the wheel of time and ride down the trail to high adventure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you make of it, kid? Not high up to accurately tell. Ain't engine sign. Ain't no Indian that dumb. Pretty far off a trail for settlers. Maybe it ain't smoke at all, eh? Huh. I know the place up beyond the North Fork where there was a hole in the ground that the devil blew smoke out of. He might have moved down here. But he didn't. Don't expect so. Only way to find out what's making that smoke is to ride on down and have a look-see. Know the horse or two lost his hay in that manner? Check your priming, shut your jaw, and let's stretch out. I figure Cheyennes could be setting a trap for idiots like us to come nosing about, or some fool greenhorn got lost and don't know no better. <laughs> That's right smart figuring, Bill. You coming? Yeah. Hit oh, boy. Hey. <laughs> If that don't beat all. Must be new to this life. Ain't gonna last long. You can bet on that. That's what city living does to a critter. Mm -hmm. That's prime horse flesh they got, just asking to be run off. Two prime horses, two prime mules, and four loco tender feet. Inviting every engine from here to the Cimarron to come and take over. And two there are Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Little more than boys at my eyesight ain't failing. Servants to them two silk hats sitting in front of that tent. So it appears. Well, <clears throat> let's ride on down and see what we can do. Best you stay here. I'll get him up moving. We'll make tracks for Santa Fe over the ridge. If I see sign, I'll bark like a fox. Been seeing enough signs all day to keep you yapping for a week. Maybe we ought to let them dandies lose their hair. Might teach them a lesson. <laughs> Magnificent view, Everett. 
The mountains stretching away on every side. Oh, capital, Charles, capital. Your idea of leaving the trail was excellent. Here, no one can bother us. It's necessary to take precautions out here. A little judgment can save a lot of trouble. Oh, by the time we reach Santa Fe, we'll be real outdoor men. <laughs> quite, quite. <laughs> our boys seem uh, quite perturbed by our actions. I can never understand what they're saying, Charles. Do you suppose they have any idea what we've got packed in those saddlebags? Well, my dear Everett, I certainly haven't told them. Well, I certainly didn't mean it. Oh, my word, there's someone coming. Well, well he just, just popped up out of the ground. Hello there. My name's Carson. I live around these parts. Put out that far side of your horses and let's get moving. But you're moving? But Mister, we... we ain't got no time to argue, Five. You want to keep your hair, do as I say. I, uh, I think we'd better do as he says, Everett. Uh, Gonzalez, Lopez, the tent. Take Leave down. it. Leave it. Just saddle up. Now, see here. May I ask what Never the trouble is? Never mind the saddles. Get on and follow me. Everett, don't argue. Gonzalez, Lopez, the horses. Round up. I demand to know what this is all about. Mister, if you don't... There. That a clear enough picture for you. Indians? Well, where did they come from? Well, there, there must be at least a hundred of them. At least. Shy and war party. But how could they have known we were here? How many guns have you got? Why are they just sitting there watching us? How many guns? Uh, uh, four pistols, two rifles, and a fowling piece. Get them. Get down in that gully and wait till I come back. Well, what do you plan to do? Hold a parley. I was married to a Cheyenne girl once. Maybe some of that party will remember me. Idiot, idiot. Bless my soul, Charles. What have we gotten into? I come in peace. Both string warriors. I am Behuinis, named by your great chief, Yellow Wolf. I would rest and smoke the pipe in the lodge of my brothers, for I am a brother to the Cheyenne. And Grey Thunder, keeper of the medicine arrows, was my father. Most string warriors have no white brothers. Chief Yellow Wolf lies in his lodge, old and broken, waiting for the death bird. Grey Thunder has gone to rest. I, Black Wolf, am chief. Behind is his second head to make smoke. I shall take his scalp and let the bad spirits out. If Black Wolf were truly a great chief, he would know my medicine is strong. He would know my victories are many. He would know I come in peace. Your voice is like the wind in my ears. It whispers, but I understand it not. Go back to your lodge and sing your death song, Behuinis. Black Wolf has come to kill. Is Black Wolf such a great warrior that he needs a hundred braves to battle two boys, two squaw men, and with weenies? Go back, white man. Our talk is done. Have both string warriors become our women? Do they tell stories around the fire of how one hundred of their bravest came against so few? It was not so when I lived amongst them. If Black Wolf is not an old woman dressed like a man... I shall match my medicine against his. Oh! Black Wolf will send Behuinis to his ancestors. And if Black Wolf fails, my party goes in peace? So be it. I, Black Wolf, have spoken. Uh, are they going to let us go, Mr. Carson? Maybe. Chief and I are going to have a little go around. Take my rifle and these pistols. If he puts me under, you'll need them. Too far and too load. Now stay down in the gully. My partner's up there in them rocks. He'll help you best he can. But I, I don't understand, so what do you plan to do? I made a dicker with the chief. We're going to fight it out. If I win, we're safe. If I lose, you've got a fight on your hands. This... This is terrible. It ain't exactly my idea of fun. What are you going to fight him with? Knife. Remember, too far and too load. Wish me luck. Come on, boy. Charles, they're going to fight a duel with knives. I don't think our leaving the trail was such a good idea after all, Everett. Well, what can we do? 
pray that he wins? Look, they're riding right for each other. Oh, it's terrible, but it's magnificent. I don't think I can watch. Everett, are you a good shot? Awful. They're both down. Someone, please help Mr. Carson. What's happening? Well, I can't tell. They're rolling around the stream. Charles, I think we'd better go down in the gulch. Oh, no. What will poor wife Matilda say when she hears about this? No. But look, it's, it's Mr. Carson. Huh? He's getting back on his horse. Charles, he won. He won. Everett, I feel very faint. You gents mind telling me what brung you out here? Well, we came around... Keep your voice down. I... I beg your pardon. Well, we, we came to Spanish California by ship on, on business. We, we thought it would be interesting to go home overland. Hmm. You mean you traveled all this way from California alone? Oh, no, no. We were with a big party until Albuquerque. We thought it would be interesting to travel to Santa Fe alone and hire guides there to take us the rest of the way. Didn't figure you could keep your hair that long a distance by yourselves. Oh. Don't feel like you learn much about this country out here. We, we're deeply grateful to you. We, we didn't realize. Well, out here, mister, you realize uh, you just ain't. No sign, Bill. Might be better if we stayed put for the night. We can fork up here. Right prime spot, kid. Didn't they give their word not to attack uh, if you beat their chief? Once they stop to think about it, they might change their minds. They don't care so much about us as our horses and the mules. You mean they... They kill us just for our animals? Sure. Horses is wealth to an Indian. Like uh, the gold you got in them saddlebags. Gold? Well, the way you've been toting them along, it must be gold in them. Well, yes, it, it's gold to us. Struck it rich, eh? Uh, you might say that. Beats all how someone ain't took it off you yet. Oh, we haven't told a soul about the contents of those bags. Oh, ain't that rich. Now, let's stop the talk and make camp. By the way, gentlemen, I... I don't think we know your names. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Carson. I'm Mr. Weatherhead, and this is Mr. Brevoort. Well, that's fine. Now let's see if we can make camp without letting every engine in the territory in on it. Mr. Carson, Mr. Williams, we're eternally indebted to you. You saved our lives and brought us safely here to Santa Fe. If there's any way in which we can repay... Mr. Weatherhead, we're glad we happened along. The only way you can repay us is to remember not to travel alone and never build a campfire in the middle of Indian country on a bright, clear day. Oh, you, you can wager we won't do that again, Mr. Carson. Well, then, goodbye and good luck. And uh, don't say anything to anybody about what you got in them saddlebags. Not a soul, sir. Not to a solitary soul. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Williams. Adios, amigos. Keep your hair on tight. Come on, boy. Up. Oh. <sighs> amazing, fellows. Absolutely amazing. Oh, sterling. Well, Charles, how about a drink and a bath, and then we'll round up some guides to take us on our way. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Kit Carson and the Silk Hats. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Young man, if you're interested in continuing your education, here is important news for you. The senior service of our armed forces, the United States Army, urgently needs qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment that science has brought into being. Right now, Men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many, many others. This training is given by the finest technical training schools in the world. It's an excellent opportunity for young men with intelligence and ambition. It can be the start of a great career for you. For full details, Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Do it today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Kit Carson and the Silk Hats. Red Eye. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's your warrant, Fox? Ah, that ain't no way to talk. I got a job for you if you want it. You don't want no job from the likes of you. Plenty of money in it. How much? Well, I don't rightly know. Now, what kind of talk is that? You notice them two silk hats that just walked out? Maybe. I want some guides to see him safe to Oklahoma City. I got the job. I'm gonna hire 20 more good boys. Just to take two silk hats east? Well, uh, uh, confidential like. They let me in on a little secret. Uh, they're carrying some mighty valuable goods all the way from California. Gold. There ain't nothing else of any value I know of out there. Uh, what's your plan? <laughs> yeah, I thought you might change your tune. Head for the Cimarron River. Awful deep and fast moving in spots. Silk hats might go under saddlebags and all. We could winter right nice down in Texas. And... I ain't no party to murder, Fox. Give me that bottle and clear off. Come in. Oh, Kit, come in, come in. They said you was looking for me, Lieutenant Taylor. Yes, they said right. Pull up a chair and rest easy. How have you been, Kit? Sassy as wild horse. Uh huh. You busy? Not for another ten days. You got a job you want me to do? No rascal named Fox. I heard tell of him. Like a bad hunk of bear meat. Exactly. Well, he and a party are headed up toward the Cimarron. I'd like you to take ten of my troopers and go out and bring them in. What's he done? Well, uh, he... There was a lot of money here in town. Merchants are complaining. Put a lot of money in my time, too. Don't rightly see as a crime if a man aims to pay it back. Well, that's just it. He doesn't plan to. How you know that? We heard it. Sorry, Lieutenant. That ain't my kind of work. Oh, now, now, wait, wait a minute, Kit. Sit down. It's not a debt we want Fox arrested for. We think he's out to murder two silk hats named Weatherhead and Brevoort. Weatherhead and... Oh, no. You know them? Yeah, I've made their acquaintance. Well, why didn't you give it to me straight in the first place, Lieutenant? Well, it's a ticklish business, Kit. We got the information from a drunken old trapper named Red Eye. Now that he's sober, he denies the whole thing. We figured if we could pick up Fox on a debt charge, why, we'd at least save the dudes. You got Red Eye here? Yeah, in the other room. Let me have a word with him. Now, Red Eye... How many of the ones he hired are in on it? I tell you, I don't know, Kit. He come to me with the idea, and I told him no. Well, how'd he know about the gold? Uh, I guess they told him. <sighs> you sure they're heading for the Cimarron? That's what Fox said, Kit. Red Eye, you'd have saved us all a passel of trouble if you'd have told me this a week ago. I didn't know you was in town, Kit. I thought you was up in Texas. Well, I guess it's straight, Lieutenant. I'll get Bill Williams, and we'll stretch out. Fine. My men will be ready in half an hour. They got a week's head start. We're going to have to do some riding to get there in time. This is going to wipe out all trail signs. I know. Half the chance that they don't expect to be followed. They're heading straight on. Sergeant, we'll cross here and keep going. With a head and brave forward. Never heard such names. I ain't never known such fools. All right, let's move. Yeah, oh boy. Come on. Kit, what's your plan when we hit the fork? A red eye said Fox plans to winter in Texas. Likely it takes South Fork. Maybe we should split up, eh? We don't run onto their sign soon. We may have to. The horses can't keep up this pace much longer. Gotta rest them soon. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Mr. Fox, how soon till we reach the Cimarron? Ain't far, Mr. Weatherhead. Ain't far at all. Uh, camp here tonight and noon there tomorrow. Oh, splendid. We're making excellent time, Charles. Yeah, uh, we're doing right well. Uh, good thing you hired us, gents. Never know what you're going to run into out here. <laughs> we uh, 
found that out, didn't we, Everett? Oh, my word, yes. Uh, do you know a gentleman named Carson, Mr. Fox? Carson? What about him? Nothing, only he saved our lives. Fought a duel with an Indian chief to save us. <laughs> well, do tell. <laughs> Quite a hero, ain't he? Eh? Well, it was on his advice that we hired you and the rest of your friends. Huh? Carson told you to hire me? Well, he didn't name you, but he suggested we get hold of some reputable guides. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, boys? We'll sure have to drink to Kit Carson. <laughs> oh, easy, boy, easy. Sir Camp, right enough. Spent the night here. Three hours gone. They'll noon at somewhere on the river. Appears we might be a little late getting there. I don't mind being late if we ain't too late. <laughs> Fox, are we making camp here? Well, the uh, river's a little rough for crossing. I uh, thought you might admire to stop here, kind of look around. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Mr. Fox, but we'd just as soon move on. Couldn't we find a shallow place to cross over? Well, now, that's a peculiar thing about the sim. When she floods, she just floods over. Besides, you wouldn't want to be risking losing what you got in them saddlebags. Uh, saddlebags? Oh, don't you worry none, Mr. Weatherhead. Your gold's as safe with us as if it was in a bank. Well, you can be sure those saddlebags have traveled much too far with us to risk losing them in the river. How long will it be before we can cross, Mr. Park? Well, it shouldn't be long. It shouldn't be long at all. Sim goes down almost as fast as she comes up. What an amazing river, Everett. Oh, everything about this West is amazing. <laughs> How about some grub, gents? Uh, mm -hmm. I always figure out here you never know when you're eating your last meal. <laughs> when I go under, why, I, I want to go under with a full belly. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you don't think there's any danger, do you? I, I mean, from the Indians? <laughs> uh, it ain't likely, <laughs> but uh, you never know. <laughs> Oh, a fine repast, Charles. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Uh, who'd ever think we'd be eating buffalo steak? Oh, marvelous. Uh, Is something wrong, Mr. Fox? Uh, gents, I'd like you to walk down to the river bank with me. Is something the matter? Well, I don't rightly know. Just something I think it's time you both found out about. Found out about? Yep. Uh, let's not do our talking here. Let's let's go where we can't be heard. Oh, yes, let's do that by all means. If there's something we should know, we'd best hear about it. <laughs> you you got a head on your shoulders, Mr. Brevoort. <laughs> Follow me. Fox, stand fast. What? You're surrounded. We're what? coming in. What? 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 Bless my what soul. Let's get caught. Hey, what? Hey. 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 mean to stand there and say that Mr. Fox intended to kill us in cold blood? It weren't very neighborly of him, was it? I can't believe it. I simply can't believe it. Why would he want to do a thing like that? He and his friends were interested in what you got in them saddlebags. But, but I don't understand. I don't wonder none. I just don't wonder. We... We owe you our lives again, Mr. Carson. Gentlemen, you don't owe me nothing. Oh, but you must let us give you a reward this time. I'll get that when I go to heaven. Don't you worry about it, none. The rest of your party that wasn't in on this with Fox, they'll see you at Oklahoma City. I'd like to give that scoundrel a, a piece of my mind. Bring out Fox! <laughs> all right, watch it! Watch it! Watch it. All, all right, Carson, all right. I, I got a gun on your back. Tell your men do as I say. Do like he says, kid. Ain't no cause to be plowed under by such a low varmint. Mr. Fox, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're nothing but... Shut up, silk hat. What... Order one of them soldiers. Saddle up my horse. Sergeant, do as he says. You ain't gonna get away with this. You two go bring them saddlebags here, Pronto. Don't move, Williams, or he's a dead un. Get the saddlebags. The do but... like he says. Hurry up with that horse. You won't get five miles. You'll get six feet if you don't sing dumb. All right now, soldier, get away from her. Come here, boy. Come here. 
What are you going to do with these? Just put them down, gentle like. But this is ridiculous. Do you know, sir? Now, that... Open them up. Don't you wake a hair, Carson. Come on, open them up. We spent six months. Take to... out half the gold. The what? Everett. I do believe he thinks we have gold in these bags. Well, oh, my word. Oh, my <laughs> word. Huh? If you don't take out that gold, why I'll... Here's the gold we have, Mr. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's gold to us, Mr. Fox. We're book collectors, and these are what we collected in California. Rare old Spanish books. What kind of crazy local get talk him, is this? Get him, I'll get you. Get him. Take that. Tie him up good, Sergeant. He'll be a mad wolfish when he wakes up. Books. If that don't beat off, he was carrying books. <laughs> Kid, think that's all them silk hats was carrying? Books? Bill, it don't seem natural, I admit. I heard tell once of a fella who cut out the inside of a book to hide a nugget in it. You think maybe they wasn't so dumb? You think maybe that's what they done? Well, that's something we ain't never gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young man, you are needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in your United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>